In this video, we'll go through a Fortress Fire wildfire disclosure report. We'll skim through it, take a look at what it is, what it's about, and if it's required, and any benefit or drawback that it may add to a transaction. Now, you may have noticed in the purchase agreement, there's a recent addition here, and that is this section on page three. It says, click here for additional report. Now, I saw this recently because an agent sent me an offer to review, and now she just left it with the, this standard, the standard verbiage here. But when I saw a wildfire service provider, I wasn't familiar with it, so I scrambled to go onto the forms library and figure out what this is all about. And then I didn't think much of it because I don't think it's a required form, or didn't at the time. But now that this is going to be, there's a section that's going to be added to the new RPA, the updated or revised purchase agreement this December of 23, I thought, okay, I really want to understand what this is all about. So here we are. Now, when we see this, obviously, okay, additional report, which one? We know we, we know which reports we're used to, right? Inspection and termite and stuff, but now there's additional. So we click this box. Now there's a drop down menu. And there's basically, so there are two options, but there's really one option for a report. You have the Fortress Wildfire Disclosure, which appears like a branded disclosure, and then not applicable. Now, the not applicable, I actually don't like this because this should make anyone uneasy because we're talking about a disclosure and any seasoned real estate professional knows that it's better to over disclose than under disclose. It's very important. So do you really want to be in the position where you're making a judgment call and saying, no, that disclosure is not applicable. If you're to say that, then you, you must be 100% certain. So I would say, unless you're hundred percent certain, I would just leave it alone. I would I would never put not applicable. I don't you don't need to make a judgment call here. You're not obligated to. So why put your neck on the line? So I would say if you don't get this report, leave this alone. If you do want to get the report, well, you'll have to click this. Now this determines which party pays. Since this is a disclosure, the seller should pay, and I think that's going to be a standard similar to an NHD up here, but everything's negotiable in a real estate transaction, right? And then we have provided by. Now this is a drop down menu of a handful of providers. Now just so you know, you don't have to, so up here, same idea, there's a drop down menu for NHG providers, but you can always type in your preferred vendor. You don't have to, you don't have to use one of the drop down companies. But in this case, wild service, wildfire service providers so new, this whole report and disclosure is so new that this is probably the only place you could ever get it from. So we'll just randomly check the first box there. Okay, so this is what it would look like if you incorporate it. Now we have to ask ourselves, what are we incorporating? So let's jump back to this. Now, Fortress Fire. So this is a, a branded report. Okay, Wildfire Disclosure Report. <clears throat> now, this is a, a PDF of a sample report that I that is on their website. This is public information. You can go on their website and see the same report. <clears throat> All right, so it starts with a warranty disclaimer. We got it. They don't want to be blamed. Okay. And we go through table of contents. Okay. It's already looking like an NHD report kind of. Then we go down here, Cal Fire hazard rating. Okay. Very high. Now then I see AB38. AB38 compliance. Okay. AB stands for Assembly Bill 38. So th this is referring to a law and being in compliance with a California state law. So as, as a broker, I'm going to want to look at AB 38, which I did. So here we are. Here's This is what it looks like. Here's the, the boring text if you want to go through it. And this is all familiar. And it's all familiar because this is actually, this has been in place for a couple of years now just because there's wildfires and <clears throat> the uh, accessibility to insurance has been an issue because of the, all the fires we've had in, in uh, over the years. <clears throat> so there is there is a, a disclosure requirement, and that is, let's jump back over to forms, okay? And you'll recognize this one, this form, the Fire Hardening and Defensible Space Disclosure and Addendum. Now, keep this in mind. AB 38, at its core, this, which is referred to here, is if a property, if your subject property is in a high or very high fire hazard area, then the seller must furnish an additional disclosure. What disclosure? Well, this one. This is the one we've been doing. 
And I have a whole video that breaks all this down that goes through this. Actually, I'll link to this video in the description. But if you're if you're curious about it, you you have to fill this out if your property is in a high or very high fire hazard zone. How do you know if it is? Great question. Well, the easy, simple answer, or what I have told everyone historically, is look at the NHD. Because on an NHD, it'll show you if it's high or very high. Now here, this report seems to, in some way, do the same thing. They show that it's in a very high and subject to AB 38. So that right there should trigger the requirement to do this form right here, FHDS. That's the CAR form acronym. Okay, so we'll go through. Now, it also shows a satellite image. Okay, and then the, really this is a very comprehensive way of saying you're in a high fire hazard area and there should be defensible space. This is a lot of information here. If you hand this to a buyer, it's, this is a lot. This is like something that if you took this very seriously, as a buyer, you, you, you have to spend a lot of time looking at this, go, just asking yourself, okay, just to digest all this information here. All right, so let's keep going through it. I mean, look at all this. It's showing you trees and structures surrounding the premises. Now, wildfire hazard rating. Now, there are two uh, fire hazard ratings on an NHD, local and then wildfire. If either one of those is high or very high, you have to do this form here, okay? But it shows you. It shows you on here. Now, let's see, regulatory compliance indication. Let's just scroll through this. So, so some of these things here, Okay, let, let me explain. I, I can already tell you the benefit and drawback of this form. Benefit, it's gonna, this is very comprehensive. This is a very comprehensive way of telling a buyer if their home has fire hazard risk and defensible space issues. This is very comprehensive. <clears throat> now, that said, so that's a benefit. More information, more of disclosure. That said, this is a lot of information. And you know what? I don't know how often they update these satellite pictures. And in my neighborhood, there's a lot of landscaping that changes all the time. And those satellite pictures, you know, I look on Bing Maps and Google Maps and, and I see different satellite images and they'll show all sorts of different vegetation. They'll show a car in my driveway that I don't even have anymore. I don't know how old those, those photos are. So now you might, you might spook everyone and say that, oh, this, this tree needs to come out or this is gonna be an issue with the neighbor. That could spook a buyer, in my opinion. Look at this, remove all branches. I mean, this is, this is, this is hardcore. This, this is hardcore, this is very comprehensive. So I would say that's one thing that I don't necessarily love about this because if someone really wants to do a deep dive, I mean, this is, this is abundantly comprehensive. If you wanna do a deep, dive, a deep dive of wildfire vulnerability, then this is your report, okay? Is this required? Well, no, because this is part of AB 38. So the requirement of AB 38 is right here. And that triggers the usage of this form right here. So do you need to have this form? No, you don't need to have it. So, I mean, look at this. I mean, there's a lot of detail here. I mean, this is the ultimate deep dive of wildfire vulnerability. All right, I'm just gonna scroll through this. We're toward the end here, but I mean, I mean it, 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 this is like some sort of uh, military operation where you need to eliminate these, these targets that are trees or shrubs <laughs> that, might, that might ignite. And, I, I, and I'm sure, by the way, I, I don't know for sure, but I would assume that just about any home that has any landscaping is going to have stuff like this around it. Okay. So another question is, well, what if, what if I don't trust just the NHD alone? All right, fine. But all this data is public in terms of wildfire risk. So this is, there's actually two. So this is the, well, well, let me jump back. We'll start with this map. So you can type in California public wildfire map and you can find results online and it'll show you can put in an address and it'll zoom to a particular area and tell you if you're in a zone that is high or very high. And then same with here, there's this, uh, the California Office of Emergency Services has hazards. now. You can look and even has it's color coded orange being high, red being very high. Same same with this. Now an NHD is is getting this data because any NHDs are aggregating data from public mapping. And this is public mapping. These are government maps. And so that's why the NHD I've I've suggested to use as the data source for determining whether a property is in high or very high fire hazard risk 
because that will tell you yes or no if you need to incorporate this form. Okay, so ultimately I would say if, so I would say the benefit is you get all the information you could ever dream of and more about a property being a wildfire uh, hazard risk. Is this required? Not that I can tell. If you know something I don't know, leave a comment and we can carry on the dialogue. But I don't see any requirement. They reference uh, Assembly Bill 38. Assembly Bill 38 re brings into this form the FHDS. You can find that out on your own looking in NHD or just looking at these maps with the property address in there. Now, if someone's really into the whole fire thing and they're super concerned or there's a listing agent and the, and the buyer has come off or buyer's agent has indicated the buyer is obsessively concerned about fire hazard, well, you can shove this report in their face and say, well, here's everything you want to know now that you have this sign off on it because we've disclosed everything. And this this is going to re reduce almost entirely the uh, liability of, of the seller because, I mean, at this point, you've disclosed everything and more that you can imagine of wildfire risk. But conversely, you may scare off a buyer as well. So that is the Fortress Fire branded disclosure report. It's kind of a, a, a premium or add-on deep dive fire disclosure. Uh, not required, but abundant in information. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment. And thanks for watching.